is my wife. She works for SPED. Um, be nice to her. <laughs> you know, uh, I do want to uh, just say that I am a retired headmaster from the Boston Public Schools. I worked in Boston Public Schools for 35 years. Uh, before I retired, I started doing bully prevention work, and then after I retired, I literally retired for 15 days, and then I started doing um, the bully prevention work for the city. I am actually the person that wrote the policy. Uh, we did get a lot of nice feedback from uh, the spend pack on that. One of the things about the policy is that it is a work in progress. It's sitting there, we can change it, we can modify it, we can do what we want with it as time goes on. So if uh, you want to go online and look at it, by all means, uh, if there's suggestions you want to make, by all means do that. Um, I also um, do um, professional development for Boston Public Schools for teachers. Last year I did over 90 schools. Uh, this year, the, anyone that didn't get me for a two-hour professional development will get me for a two-hour professional development. But also, um, what has happened is that the law says that that professional development has to be ongoing. So I'm going to talk about our ongoing efforts in a, in a little bit of a second. Okay? Um, this works great. Look at that. Beautiful. I can stand back here. Um, the boy, uh, first of all, I just want to introduce a few people over here. This is Dr. Kim Story. Uh, this is Dr. Ron Slavey. And this is uh, Miss Patty Cameron. Uh, uh, Kim Story and Ron Slavey worked with me all summer uh, doing the work that we did to keep the bully prevention stuff going. They're here tonight. Um, I introduce all. I introduce them to all my Boston friends as my new smart friends from Harvard. They're, they're both brilliant. What they know about bullying is phenomenal. The work that we did together this summer, I think you're going to be very, very pleased with it as it rolls out this year. Um, there's a new organization called the Bully Prevention Research Institute, of which I am now a part. And uh, as we keep going forward with new initiatives to help prevent bullying in the Boston Public Schools, the Bully Prevention Research Institute will take the lead on that. And who do we have to thank for that? We have to thank for that Dr. Carol Johnson, Mayor Menino, and John Deere. Um, as this thing rolled out, I have to tell you, uh, Mayor Menino and Dr. Johnson were way ahead of everybody else in making sure that we were on top of our game. They started professional development and training people way before anyone else in the country. How many people here know that we actually have a bully hotline? Do people know that? Okay, you get something extra if you know the number. Okay? All right. that, I, I knew I wouldn't have to give out a prize on that. Okay? Um, the, the number is 617-592-2378. It's also going to be up on the screen later on. But you don't really have to know it because on every brochure and on every piece of paper that should be coming home from schools this year, it should be on that, okay? Uh, the other thing that I just want to point out is I'm hoping that this is the not, not the last time you see uh, me and the folks that are with me tonight. We will be available all year to, if you need us to come to another meeting or if other things come up, by all means, uh, feel free to invite us to another meeting. I'm going to tell you the hotline number again, 617-592-2378. Does that number spell anything? No, what that number does, it's very interesting, because it's a very nondescript number, because all it is is a cell phone. But the beauty of it is when you call, a real person answers it. He's a very handsome, distinguished gentleman in his late 50s. This is the bully hotline right here. When it rings, I answer it. Uh, day and night, 24 hours. No, 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 no. I, uh, if you call at night, I'll probably get back to you next morning. If you call in the morning, I probably will answer it that, at that time or later on. Okay? Um, as you know, in, on May 3rd, 2010, the bully prevention law was signed in. Massachusetts became the 43rd. I turn around and stuff, right? I'm like, okay. You know? uh, Massachusetts became the 43rd state to sign this into law. There are now 47 states that have a bully prevention law. As these laws have come into effect, they become more and more uh, uh, strict. Okay? And of course, we all know that this was a response to the suicide of uh, some of our kids in, in Massachusetts. Okay? Um, what this law does is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, but before we. 
other than the law, what we want you to know is this, that the spirit of the law is simply this. Every single child, no matter what his disability, ability, nationality, religious creed, no matter what, he has a constitutional or God-given right to come to school and have a bully-free education. And as I go to schools, I tell every single teacher, every single adult that deals with their kids, it is their uh, moral, personal, and legal responsibility to make sure this happens. Right? And that's the law. Uh, as we, if you look at the kids that are in these, these are all Boston Public School kids. These pictures were taken over the summer at the different camps that the kids have. So if you see your child in there somewhere, we can get to the prints if you want them, okay? Um, can we take a quick stop? Sure. We're going to turn around so that people in the video can actually see. Uh, just so you know, this law has six major components to it. The very first is that every single school district in Massachusetts has to have a bully prevention policy. That policy had to be put, uh, given to the Department of Education by December 31st. As is turned in, you can go online and read it. Uh, the second thing is that every single uh, staff member, personnel, professional, uh, paraprofessional has to have uh, ongoing professional development. What we've decided this year, the people that we work together with have decided that we've created online modules. We've created these two hour bully prevention modules that this year teachers can go online and do these uh, modules, they take about two hours to do. The first one is called creating a, a bully-free climate. The second one, which is very interesting to uh, near and dear to our hearts here, is uh, bully prevention for students with disabilities. So it's a two-hour online module. Uh, my belief is it will also be made available to parents. Uh, you can go online and read it and uh, study it if you want. Other than that, we've... Uh, okay. Uh, the next thing is that every single school has to have their own bully prevention plan. They have to develop their own plan, okay? This is around curriculum. This is around how we uh, get our message across to kids, how we make sure every kid can report bullying in the school, what kind of songs their kids are going to sing, what kind of assemblies they have. There has to be bully prevention messages throughout that. Okay? That curriculum has to be better too. If you're going to have kids who are coming home and reading stories about victims of bullying or about heroes of, 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 uh, of kids, that, people that try to help bullies and things like that. Uh, and the fifth one there is that every single school has to have their own bully reporting policy, a way for kids to report bullying to the principal. Um, one of the things that is going on now is that we're doing extensive training beyond the two hours for any teachers that are interested. We're trying to get a teacher from every single school to be that school's point person. Last year we did about 50 teachers. Uh, last weekend there were 20 more teachers from the Boston schools who volunteered for uh, um, education and professional development above and beyond what the other schools are doing. So that when, when the issue comes up about bullying, somebody calls the hotline, we're gonna give them a specific person in a school that they can go to, okay? You can always call the uh, bully hotline. Um, in your home, there should be a form for, so that's age appropriate and language appropriate um, so that the kids can fill those out. And finally, the last one there, it states simply this. If your child has a disability, and that disability would lend to make him a target of bullying, social, emotional education must be provided in his IEP. Okay, so if, if your kid is a kid who could be the target of a bully, this year, if you notice the IEPs, those guys, folks that have been doing this for a while, the IEP, IEP had a, 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 a bold sentence there with a block, and you checked it off if your child was a, had the potential to be a victim of uh, bullying. All right? Your child should be getting social, emotional education in the school. If that's not going on, hopefully it will be going on this year. Is, um, is isolation a form of bullying? Isolation is a form of bullying, yes. You know, uh, isolation is one of the hardest things to, that's, a, when we get that kind of thing, I don't want to go into a big thing about it, but that's the type of thing that we need to teach teachers how to teach kids to avoid that. And there's a whole strategy that we can put in place around inclu including kids and, and creating a culture and climate of inclusivity and niceness. And there are Sometimes kids- Sometimes teachers do it as well. Yeah, you know, I, I get that. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, 
I come from Hubble's line. <laughs> it goes back to my, the oldest kid that was born in my family, you know. So I know, you know. Um, as we move through this and throughout the year, and you can call me anytime you want, and if it's a spe specific issue, uh, I can help you with that school too. Okay? Excuse me, I have a question. Is the kind of to make uh, the kids with the special education taking the lunch in the classroom? Kids are taking their lunch? The lunch, they take the lunch right. in the classroom that's to not be uh, in the classroom. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, yeah, that's a, Is it a, a kind of. Yes, uh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's what, weird. Yeah, what's, yeah, that's weird. That, yeah. Uh, give me one of these, David. You're absolutely right. That's one of those things we have to fix. You know? uh, yeah. So there are clearly issues that you guys are facing. They're not, see, a lot of times kids with, kids with disabilities, it's not a question of somebody's punching them or somebody's calling them a name. It's much more of an exclusion type thing. You know that 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 form of bullying. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you, I, you, can't, you as a parent have a lot to say about okay. that, right? I mean that it's loud, clear to me. Sometimes they don't realize it. Right. The child going to talk to the parent. Loud, loud and clear. You know what I mean? Go right at them. That's, that's not, all right. And then finally, just so you know, the legal definition is a student is being bullied or victimized when he or she is exposed repeatedly and over time to negative actions on the part of one or more students. So being excluded continually is a negative action. All right? Simple as that. And there's things that we need to teach teachers to do and schools to do to make sure that stuff gets everybody. Is the box on the IP that you check off, is that already on there? Because I didn't notice it on my child's IP. I think it is. Yeah. 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 Yes, it was on last year. What box? On, on the IP, there is a one single line. See? You've seen it too, right? Yeah. All right. You mentioned that the policy is a living document. I don't necessarily see why you should restrict it to being on the part of one or more students. As we know, sometimes it can come from adults. Exactly. Teachers. Right, right. But a lot of times what we're talking about is school bullying. And what we were most concerned about when this was written was the idea of student-on-student of, of -student bullying. But, but you're absolutely right. There's some serious bullying that goes on with bus monitors. Some bus monitors have heard stories from my daughter's friend that happened. Our child also. Um, right. wow. You know, there's actual bullying coming from us. 317 592 2378. Call me and I'll look into it. All right. Okay. At this time, I'm going to introduce uh, Dr. Ron Slavey, who's going to come up and talk. How do I do for my 15 minutes?